Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for me, it's really a great pleasure to meet people on whose theory I'm basing my research. It's uh, really incredible. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy my applications of your theory. Maybe someone will recognize uh, parts from uh, their books, uh, something like that. Uh, today, I'm trying uh, to present uh, our research with uh, Mr. Peter Vashik uh, uh, about application of geometric algebras into the switched systems. Well, today I will start from short, brief introduction to switched systems. Then I will formulate the main program and explain why we use geometric algebras, why we suddenly decided to uh, throw our uh, theory into this point. Then, briefly, uh, I will remind what is geometric algebras for conics and what more we can start with. Well, so when you hear the term switched system, what first comes to your mind? Maybe some um, engineering system, maybe some uh, traffic lights. There are lots of applications. But generally, by switching system, we mean uh, the dynamical system with a continuous and discrete state. So uh, as you can see, the system uh -huh, is randomly. OK, figure it out. Uh, the system has discrete switch, sigma from t and continuous parts. So we have few continuous parts, and in the moment of switch, we have some external condition. So uh, what are we interested in? We jumped from the classical question, what what's uh, considered as a switch system. Uh, the, uh, usually, we need to understand is it stable or not, but we want to understand if it's controllable. Controllable in which sense? If from any point to any point there exists a path, a path generated by a set of switched signals. So why such definition was considered? Because we can see the analog with the uh, control systems where Instead of our switch, our brilliant switch sigma from t, we have uh, the usual control uh, u from t. And uh, for these cases, we can uh, use the contrary maximum principles and so on. But for switched systems, it unfortunately doesn't work. So we need some alternative. Uh, what brings us to this theory? Like uh, we started from the problem of oscillations of the spring pendulum, but we have the different formulation. We add and remove additional spring in some particular uh, times of, uh, of our motions. So it changes totally our system to the other one. Uh, the switching ball <laughs> is different. So we can reformulate the problem of uh, the uh, spring pendulum. Uh, of course, we consider that we don't have for now external and friction forces because it's complicated <laughs> too much and uh, we want to start from something simple. So we come to the problem of uh, controllability of switched linear dynamical systems. So instead of function f, you have set of matrices. So linear switch systems. We are interested in what? In the algorithm, which will allow us to get from one point to the other one. And uh, we figured out that we have a brilliant tool for that, geometric algebra for conics. Geometric algebra for conics introduced by Pervas, uh, the Clifford algebra, uh, J353. So uh, as we consider the basis, we have three origins, three infinities there, and uh, special embedding. And why are we interested in that? Because it's a simple way to play with conics. 
uh, by Dvenit Konix because our two by two systems are usually done, are usually described by a conic. So we have here the IPNS representation, which we will use in future. I will remind when it will be needed. So why GEC? A simple representation, transformed object, so we can rotate, translate, and scale. That's all we need. Uh, then uh, we will need that circumscribed uh, ellipse construction, which occurred to be not possible in case of rotated ellipses without using geometric algebras, uh, because uh, with, the algebra, with geometric algebras, it's simple. You just have this brilliant ellipse and you circumscribe. You do what you have. And uh, without, it's more complicated. Then, the most important part was uh, that we don't need to keep the error by stretching ellipses and intersecting them every time uh, as in classical approach. So we will use solver only once instead of using it 20 or more times. So that will minimize our numerical errors. So uh, we can remind ourselves uh, the ellipse representation in GAC. So we will use this representation. We have this uh, ellipse with semi-axis. We will call them in future A and B also. Uh, then we, what we else use, we use the matrix representation from uh, uh, to extract the parameters. And then from that, we can simply get uh, center and semi-axis of the, any ellipse needed. Just uh, pay your attention to the, that the most complicated operation for the computer here is square root. So we don't have any more mistakes there. Uh, we'll use a scalar, which is brilliantly scaling our ellipses. And now we are back to our switch system. So, reminding, we are playing uh, around the oscillation problem. So, in case we want to start classical approach, we are having this face portrait for the first system. This is non-rotated case. Non-rotated case is uh, uh, in the case when we have switched, uh, switched system oscillations without damping. So, uh, how it works. So, for example, you are going to get from one point to other one, you are getting by the trajectory, and you need to switch to the second trajectory and move across through the needed one. We'll make a small assumption, we'll start and then with the same family of ellipses. So, we are starting to jump deep into the geometric algebra. Uh, we will find the IPNS representation of the first initial ellipse, and uh, uh, how do we do it? We usually start from one Runge Kuta and then inscribe ellipse by conic fitting algorithm. This one conic fitting algorithm was presented, I think, on the first uh, day of the conference by Pavel Lochka. And uh, then we will have the scaling parameter in which just also pay attention that there is just simple dividing. And uh, uh, such our picture looks from the beginning. We have one ellipse. One, this is one first family of ellipses. This is the second one. I mark the number of the family as a down index. So you see the E21 and E2 scaled. For, the, uh, for our investigation, we just need correct uh, scaling parameters, and then we will just scale our our ellipses. Uh, so the main problem was uh, the, that four point as intersection is a not element of GEC. So there was a applied a classical uh, point pair decomposition procedure. And then we can proceed to such system of ellipses. So you see they are somehow intersecting, but uh, the main 
idea is for optimal control, we want minimal amount of switches. And that means that all ellipses should be circumscribed, but not intersected, just circumscribed. So uh, we can consider it, we can look on a small example. So we, for example, start from a system without damping. We want to get from the point, which is uh, 2, 5, to the point uh, 12, 22. But we can use only the trajectory of ellipses. So what we do, we start, we get what kind of family of ellipses is it? This red part is uh, the only one numerical neuron you put a method. Inscribed inside was connected by connected <laughs> algorithm of the, uh, our ellipse of the first family. And then we start scaling them, scaling and scaling and scaling until we get the final ellipse, which contains our final point. And in the end, we can get this switched pass. You see, we are switching between ellipses. Here is first switch, second switch, third, etc. cetera. Uh, these switches are showing us in which moment, so on which coordinate or and which velocity we need to add our spring and remove it. Uh, this is a case can be solved in classical, <coughs> but this is a more, more complicated one. We have damping, so one of the ellipses is rotated. Uh, so our algorithm works same brilliantly way. We just use geometric algebra to stretch our conics and to intersect them. And we don't need to solve system of equations to check if ellipses are intersecting. We just can batch the IPNS representation. OK. So uh, this is it. So thank you for your attention.